I've stuck pretty close to the Eastern Front games when it comes to World War II, and I always wanted to get into the Pacific and some grand strategic naval operations whenever the opportunity arrived. I considered war in the Pacific, but it was a bit dated and expensive, and Battle Stations Midway looked too arcadey. So when I heard about Victory at Sea Pacific a few months ago, I was eagerly awaiting its release. September the 14th came and went, and I had my chance, and because my internet is slow as snails, I took a bit of time to search the forums and was met with a lot of bitching about how buggy the first one was and how the devs pretty much abandoned it. And to be honest, people don't really talk too much about the first one in the wargaming community, so my expectations were a bit tempered. It wasn't helped when the game didn't launch my monitor's native resolution. But it was a quick fix in the options, and soon I was being asked if I wanted to try the tutorial. I said yes because I never played the old one, and my initial thoughts going through were one of pleasant surprise. It starts you out by giving the basics of the up-close 3D combat aspect of the game, and I found myself enjoying what I was doing. The tutorial was pretty thorough and full of explanation, and if you're at all familiar with strategic war games, you know those competent tutorials are few and far between. The combat mechanics themselves seem solid, and it used an order wheel to give commands on the water, something I was familiar with in the Gravitine series of games, and the graphics looked pretty good when it came down to it. Uh, they even implemented a nice depth of field effect. There are some visuals that are lacking, like the planes, or the lack of feeling of buoyancy on the water, and absence of sailor sprites making ships appear oddly ghost-like in abandonment, but when the strategic genre often makes do with simple counters for unit graphics, Vast visuals are more than passable. I'm not an expert on the weaponry of that time in the Pacific, but the ranges and scale looked pretty accurate in the tutorial as well. Think still division rather than company of heroes. It seemed like this was going to be a pretty good balance between arcade and simulation, at least as it pertained to combat, and there were neat little touches like carriers having to lean into the wind in order to launch their planes. Later I was in a section of the tutorial that demonstrated I could look through the periscope of subs to do scouting, or similarly binoculars on other ships, and it was pretty cool. I noticed that the sound design was excellent, and turning, reversing your turbines, and finagling between torpedoes, attempting to turn starboard and port round them at the last second is awesome and rewarding. Before I knew it, I was hearing FDR's infamy speech, and was presented with some official looking correspondence. And I was starting to think this may be a good one, or at least have potential. When I was introduced to the operational map, I started to get the hint that this game would be massive. High scope and difficult to master. Just my kind of thing. Now that operational map is called the bridge, and it spans the entirety of the Pacific Theater. I quickly realized how seamless everything was. Much like Supreme Commander or Sins of a Solar Empire, you had this huge strategic map covering the entire operating area in real time, and could theoretically zoom in to the combat screen whenever and wherever you wanted. There's a slight loading screen of 3 to 4 seconds when leaving the bridge to enter the 3D combat screen, but it still feels pretty seamless and interconnected. Because it's all done to scale and the Pacific is so vast, from the bridge view you can go from real time to 1000x speed. And it all has this very grand and strategic feeling when you first jump into it. Kinda hearts of irony but more leverage to combat instead of economics. At least, that was the first vibe I got from it. Getting into the core mechanics of the game, your objective is to island hop from port to port and capture them to swing the balance of the war in your favor, which is shown here at the top of the screen with this red and blue bar. Blue being the advantage on the United States side, red being the advantage on the Japanese. As you or your enemy gain victories, it starts to shift accordingly. You do this by first scouting the port, then raiding it with your fleets to weaken its defenses, and finally calling for an amphibious assault whenever you think the defense is worn enough to get your landing ships on the dirt. There's a bar with a number that tells you how many landing ships have to touch down in order to successfully capture the port, and you can only schedule amphibious assaults every so often to keep you from spamming them. You pay for all of your ships, equipment, and port upgrades through war bonds, which you gain by completing objectives listed on the bridge screen and having possession of actual ports. The more ports you own, the more your war bond income. Your entire navy is divided into task forces that you manage via the bridge view and you can control or watch engagements through the 3D combat screen. You can switch back and forth whenever you like, but pop-ups appear on the bridge whenever a notable event occurs, like an assault or an engagement, and you can quickly jump in. You also have to manage your supply convoys, albeit in a hands-off kind of way, by assigning supply priority to each of your ports. The AI takes care of the rest. If you find yourself logistically stretched thin, you probably need to build more supply convoy ships. There's also the nitty-gritty, like managing crew rations if you so choose. Again, the timing, scale, and distances are all there, 
So fans of authenticity will appreciate the breadth and depth. You can micromanage down to individual guns on destroyers and control individual fighter bomber squads or keep it macro to a level of directing entire task forces and simply giving move and attack orders from the bridge while they do the rest if you want to focus on the larger strategic aspect. There's a 4X space sim called Distant Worlds that handles the AI and user input in a similar manner and I've always been a fan of this style. You can be as hands-on or off as you want and slowly take on more and more of the reins from the AI as you gain confidence and knowledge without feeling overwhelmed the first few hours of playing. The UI is a mix of good and bad for this type of game. Relevant info is tooltipped, and it all seems to be placed intuitively, at least the stuff that's there. Some essential pieces of information are missing entirely from the UI, and I'll get to that in a bit. It's worth noting that there isn't a skirmish mode, it's campaign only, which is fine with me. The combat is definitely fun, so I could see a use for it, but it's almost akin to asking for a skirmish mode in Hearts of Iron or Unity of Command, so I won't knock it for not having the option. The only thing I don't like as far as game options go is you don't have the ability to play as Japan or the UK until you beat the US campaign. It's kind of archaic, and it doesn't make sense to restrict players in that way, in my opinion. That being said, the more time I spent with Victory at Sea Pacific, the more weaknesses I found. There's a definite lack of polish. You can tell this game was released too early. The AI will do stupid things like send squads of planes piecemeal into heavy AA only to be shot down. Or send 30 fighters to attack one small ship, wasting your entire aerial force unless you manually tell each individual plane to attack different boats. Really, the entire targeting system of the air aspect of the game needs heavy work. Worse, there's no way to disable the AI if you want to prevent those things, so you're constantly battling against it. And the AI itself isn't really that good. In a strategic game, it needs to be, because that's your bread and butter. Once the shiny veneer starts to wear, you're going to notice. Ships are godly accurate, to the point of cruisers and battleships often being sunk in the first salvo, and battles rarely last more than a minute once they begin, signifying a lack of playtesting. There's no damage model on the ships, and no visual crew members on deck, or marines on amphibious assaults. It detracts from the immersion. Simple 2D sprites manning the guns, or little marines charging a beach upon landings would do wonders for immersion, as well as sailors floating after a ship sunk instead of those ghost ships sinking we get now. Obviously I'm not asking for anything mechanic-wise, just simple 2D visuals no more than a few pixels in size. There's also some pretty glaring camera issues. There's no way to move the camera along the vertical axis, and you have to do it by zooming in and out. And the devs put that upper limit on how high you can place the camera way below the planes themselves. So it's difficult to issue orders to them unless you hit the space bar to directly follow the unit you have selected at the time. Also, you can barely tell which squad you have selected in the first place. The box around them becomes a slightly lighter shade of the unselected units and often blends into the sun. The squad bar on the left does the exact same thing. Maybe getting two shades of gray lighter when you select something. Aside from that, there are core things missing from VASP that just make me scratch my head. You can't click and drag to select units, and this is pretty much the first RTS I've ever seen that doesn't allow it. There are a few critical UI elements missing. For instance, you can't reference how many convoy ships and oil tankers you have, so there's no way to know when you're low on them and need to build more. There's no number showing how many planes you're limited to at each level of port size, so you just have to guess at first, and if you build too many, well, too bad. You can't ship planes from port to port, so if you've progressed in your island hopping and want to move planes from Pearl Harbor further west, you can't. You have to waste war bond money. And there's not even a way to command your units to hold their fire. Oh, and that periscope thing? Turns out it's just a novelty. You can just as easily right-click the spot you want to scout on the bridge and hit recon and it does it for you. When you do it, all you do is move over the island and it immediately tells you all that's on the island anyway, so it's no fun after the first try. If the devs had taken the time to at least put in a mechanic that was at least somewhat challenging with some kind of reward, it might be worth it. But right now, there's no reason to even go back to the periscope once you've done it outside of the tutorial. And then the bugs. There are plenty of bugs. Things like ships going through the ground like it's water. Landing ships getting stuck and not assaulting ports. Aerial sorties not attacking targets you command them to. And this. Oh, 
oh, and I lost my ability to zoom in and out in the bridge mid-game. So it effectively killed my game because I was pretty zoomed in. I also wish there was a way to disable the HUD because all that being said, uh, VASP is pretty beautiful at times and the UI can be obstructive and get in the way and sometimes you just want to watch what's going on. You want to see the beauty that the devs have put into the game. I mentioned it in the forums and they said they'd consider it, so here's to hoping, I guess. Don't get me wrong, aside from that long list of negatives, VASP has a lot of potential. When I play, it's like I got a beta of an awesome game that just hasn't came together yet, so I'm not really sure why this wasn't released as early access. Right now, no, it's not worth $35, maybe $15, but I'm holding out hope the devs fix the myriad of problems plaguing the game. Because if they do, it's going to be great and worth every penny of that base price, and they seem genuine in their intent to make VASP all it can be in their community participation. That's all I have now, guys. Um, I'm not really sure what to do with this channel yet, so let me know if you enjoyed this review and want more. I'm still trying to fill things out, trying to figure out what I need to cover. Uh, so just I anything you have to say in the comments, uh, directing with, with what you like would, would help a, a lot. So I appreciate it, and thank you for listening.